everyone, Seth Thompson here. In this 15 minute tutorial, I will demonstrate how I sculpt a detailed Celtic knot into a simple stone cube using a combination of cleverly designed alpha masks created in Photoshop. The goal of this video is to show you how making smart design choices up front can save you lots of time and give you great control once you start sculpting in ZBrush. So let's get started. So here's the design I picked from the internet and I'm just going to go to the magic wand tool by pressing W and the thing I want to do is to select all the white areas outside of the design so that I get just the design. So that's what you see me doing here and then I'm going to do a control X to cut these out. So now we just have the design by itself and then I'm going to control click that layer so that we get just the selection here uh, grabbed and then I'm going to go to a gradient tool and make a new layer. I'm going to feather this by one just to get the edges a little bit soft and then on my new layer I'm going to fill this with solid white. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to paint some interesting little areas to help make some depth for our future displacement map. So here I'm just going to grab the lasso tool and I'm selecting the areas of the design that I think will make sense to add some recess or basically cavity, uh, or, you know, downward displacement. And here I am just using the brush tool. I set it to like opacity and flow about 50% because I don't want it super dark. And on a new layer on top of that white one, uh, I'm going through and just doing some basic painting around where I feel the displacement map needs to go a little bit lower. And then you can see where that kind of white design would be higher on top. Um, <laughs> you can see that I'm kind of making some mistakes as I'm trying some stuff out. But once I get something that I like that's working, I'll just quickly go through all my other pieces and start doing this for the sections that I want the displacement to be going downwards as well. So again, we have those uh, two different layers. We have the one that's basically just the darkness that we're going to use a little bit later and you'll see in the displacement, it'll kind of make sense, but it'll make a downward displacement. And then we have our other layer that's all pure white. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to control click that white layer again so we get just that design. Go back to my black layer, inverse my selection, and then I'm going to control X cut that out of there. So now what we have is just the pure design kind of blending nicely through that white section. And now I'll adjust the opacity a little bit of this top layer and then I'm control clicking it again. And what I just did was I press control H to hide my selection. Now you can see whenever I'm painting I'm actually using the selection that's in there, but I can paint without having to see that marquee tool. It's just something that I like to do. And then you can press Control H again if you want to see it, Control H to hide it. So now I'm making a, I made a new layer for this extra darkness I was putting on top, because later I can just blend those. I always like having control. Uh, next thing I'm doing is going back to my brush tool and using the white color to try and add some sort of edge fade off on the white there because it was feeling a little bit too strong, but I need to increase my opacity back up to 100%. This will make sure that we get a nice blend between this displacement map whenever we use it. This is kind of anal because we're going to see this from far away and it won't make much of a difference, but um, these little tiny adjustments sometimes do make a difference, so that's why I'm taking the time to do it. The next thing I'm going to show you is jump over to Mac so we can look at our UVW setup. Here's my simple cube in 3ds Max that I created, which we're going to take into ZBrush and Sculpt. And a few things I want to show you on this. I have a, not, uh, a lot of nice polygons in the front here because that's where we'll put our Celtic design. And I want to make sure that in ZBrush we get the most tessellation and design here. And then over here I faded out the polygons because I want to have less polygons here. More on the front whenever I'm sculpting. This is just me trying to be efficient with my use of uh, polygons whenever I'm in ZBrush. And then in the back here finally I'm just deleting out faces because I'm not going to see them in my final image which I'll be uh, release at a future date. This is sitting against a wall so no reason to put topology in a place that we're not going to see it. Uh, the other thing too for those of you um, that want to unwrap this if you do your own uh, I'm going to show you kind of how my UVWs are unwrapped because you'll see that again in a minute in Photoshop. I've just cut the edges here you can see along here all the way through the back and it allows this to unfold really nicely and gives us really clean um, non-stretching UVs. And then um, basically just come in here, Tools, Render UVW Template, Render UVW Template, and then we'll take this. I save that, and in a minute you'll see that in Photoshop. The final thing I'll show you, and for those of you that are familiar with my tutorials, uh, you know how I like 
using a non-subdivision workflow for topology whenever I sculpt in ZBrush so that I can get as evenly distributed topology as possible and also avoid getting pinching around edges. So what I always do is in the edit poly section here, I'll go through and anywhere that I want the uh, subdivision to occur without softening, I'll come through and I select all these edges and then the edges that I want, I'll come through and uh, add a crease of 1.0. By default, this is at zero. But what that does for you for now is if I put a turbo smooth on top, you can see how we're getting more subdivisions, but the edges aren't softing out. So then I can get the topology quite high, but we still keep the cube nice. So, you know, this way we don't soften out the edge. But what I do want to show you is normally this is a behavior that you would get. You put a turbo smooth on top and with no crease and you get edges all soft out like that. So normally what I'm doing is I'll put this on top. I'll uh, add some subdivisions in here like this, and then I do like to get a little bit of curvature on it so they have some softness like you see here. And then I'll usually take this, collapse it, and that's what I'll export into ZBrush. But before we do that, let's go ahead and hop back into Photoshop. Back in Photoshop, you can see I have my UVW template floating above my design image. Now in my design, I'm going to select my two layers that I want to bring over, and I'm going to hold down the Shift and Alt key with the Move tool. And drag that over. By holding those two, that'll allow those two designs to stay stuck together. If you drag them over separately or copy and paste them, sometimes they're floating in different places. So with those both in the exact same location, I name them white and then levels, and then I'm going to just transform those and change the scale so that it kind of fits in the middle of our design. And once I'm happy with that, I'll save both of these out and I'll turn off our wireframe so that we just have a solid mat here. One of them I'll just call like a uh, door triangle white alpha, and this will be for one version of our displacement. And then I'm gonna do the other one, which is our faded design, and save that as, uh, I think I call it fade or something like that. And in a minute in ZBrush, I'll show you how we use both of those to create different types of displacement. Now in ZBrush, you can see three different cubes that we have here. One, we have the cube that kind of shows you what the end result of our sculpting is going to look like. And you'll notice uh, in here, just a sneak preview, you see how we have the nice layering that's between these two sections here? That's happening because of those two alpha maps we drive. Um, that one with the faded section that we spent the time creating nice things through here in Photoshop, that's gonna allow us to get this quick little layering within here that adds that nice extra bit of detail. The thing that you see in the middle, um, this is kind of my base that I start with out of ZBrush and I save and duplicate over and over so that I can add different types of designs in here or different types of weathering. And by using this one, um, I have something that feels more like a, a milled stone and then I can work from it. And then uh, last but not least, we have the one that we pulled over from 3ds Max. And as you remember, this is one that I did some of the turbo smooths to, and then I softened out the edges just a little bit and made sure that it's quite dense. And basically, the only thing that I'm using to get the shapes through here is a trim uh, dynamic brush and then also a clay build up brush. So I'll just show you that really quickly, kind of how I set up my uh, base before I actually start any of my sculpting. Um, what I like to do is I'll get to our brush settings, I'll pick the Trim Dynamic, press T down here, grab that, and then um, just come through here and I like to hold down Shift when I'm dragging, that way it isolates it to one line, and then you can just quickly come through and add some uh, shape to this, or almost like the equivalent of a uh, beveled edge. And of course, if we'd added the beveled edges in 3ds Max, we'd already have this, but then I'd have denser topology right around the edges. I like how that this topology is all super even around the sides. And remember previously how I told you how there'd be less topology over here and then more up here? That'll play to our advantage a little bit later as we're sculpting. So yeah, I, I just use that trim smooth border brush around this. I'll also have symmetry activated when I'm doing these and um, go through here and just pretty much chew away the edges a little bit so it feels a little bit more soft and less CG. I'm not going to do the whole piece, I just want to give you guys an idea of how I go about doing this. The other thing I do too is to add just a little textural detail to this, especially if I was going to be up close. I'll come in here, uh, press B, go to Clay Build Up tool, and then I'm going to, instead of going like this, I usually change my alpha to a, uh, sorry, not my alpha, my freehand mode to spray. And what that allows me to do is quickly get a whole bunch of detail in here right away, or a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, 
not different stuff, uh, just a little bit more detail. Instead of having to, what I used to do is I'd come in here and I'd go freehand and I'd do one by one by one by one like this. By changing this to spray, I can go through a little bit quicker and give this some um, textual information. And then what I do is I just hold down the shift key and smooth that out a little bit. And I'll do that for the entire piece. And then that just gives us like a little surface bump to this. And whenever you're done, you'll have like a little cube that's like that, that um, you'll see in a minute is what we're going to start doing our sculpting with. So the first thing that we want to do is you'll see I have my alpha panel expanded and I'm just going to import those two alpha maps that we created, the solid and then the faded design. And then um, with those selected, picking one of those, the first one I'm going to select is my solid white alpha. And I'm going to come over to the tool section, expand masking, mask by alpha, and then click mask by alpha. You'll notice this is upside down. That's because I forgot to flip V whenever I imported the image. But anyways, we'll just work with it as is. So now that I have it in here, um, the first thing that I usually like to do is to mess around with this inflate setting out of the deformation panel. I'll give it a negative value and already you can see that it's uh, displacing internally just a little bit. But it's not strong enough, so I press W on the keyboard to go to transform mode. I make sure that that's aligned nicely with um, that so I can pull it straight in, or I guess push it into my mesh. And then as you'll notice, when you click that little center spot, um, out of the three different dots, you can translate that forward or backwards. So I move that in a little bit more so that it gives it some uh, more depth to it. And after that, I'm going to add our other mask, the one that's faded. And this way we can add that kind of layering effect. And the important part about doing both of these separately is one, the first one allows us to give a general overall depth. And then the second one that I'm getting ready to mask my alpha now, this will allow us to get the uh, layering effect. So you get the depth first and then next the layering. So now that we have the depth, we're doing the layering mask with the translate on, and we pulled that out a little bit. And if you look closely, you can see that we're actually getting that nice kind of carved layered effect that we get for free because we, well, not for free, but we have a lot of control over it since we did it in Photoshop. And that's why I really like using these design-based alphas. I use them over and over and over. Anyone who watches my tutorials, you know I do this all the time. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the Trim Dynamic Brush to just break up the edges of the um, part of our subtool here a little bit. And what I like to do all the time before I actually start any major adjustments is I'll make duplicates of something in case I mess up. That's all you see me doing here. But anyways, uh, we go back in here and just like we did our solid mesh with the, um, uh, the first kind of stone that I started out with, I'm doing this again with our triangle here along the edges of all these Celtic designs just to get rid of that super sharp CG feel to it. All that stuff's super important to make sure that this feels realistic and not like a computer generated asset. And then you just see me kind of doing that over all the pieces here and my sped up time lapse. Anytime I'm doing this type of stuff too, I, I always like to kind of think of maybe how like an actual stonemason would do this. And that's why I like to really think about my designs and everything and plan them out before I actually do all the carving. Because back then or whenever they do that in real life, if you messed it up the first time, you know, you're gonna have to go back. There's no undo tool. So it's good to really plan it out. The next thing that you just saw me do is I'm selecting the clay buildup tool and I'm going to change this to a Z sub by default as a Z add. But Z sub will allow me to cut into my mesh. And um, honestly, the clay buildup, I use this all the time for most of my destruction. I, I do use some specific brushes every now and then that I'll create with alpha maps for a particular type of weathering. But I find that the uh, clay buildup brush is fantastic. I mean, it, it just does everything that you need. And uh, in this video, I don't combine that with the trim dynamic brush, but you can really quickly break stuff apart with the clay buildup. Then go back over if you want to flatten out some of the areas with the trim dynamic. So I recommend you try that out. But anyways, all I'm doing here is just kind of cutting into this, adding weathering, sometimes extra additional little holes. Anything that I feel maybe would have occurred over a few hundred years, because I want these to feel like they have some age to them. And uh, also it's just kind of cool to see that stuff. 
And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, you know, this is pretty basic stuff, but I hope that you guys learn some stuff from it. And finally, you know, I have key shots, so I'm just dropping it in here and playing around with it, taking a look at it. And yeah, that's it. On a final note, I just want to thank everyone for watching this video. If you're as busy as me, 15 minutes out of your day is a lot of time. But if you want to see more of these tutorials in the future and you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do so now. Thanks. And if you'd like to learn more about my art, be sure to check out my Facebook artist page that you can see in the address linked above. In addition to all the tutorials I put on YouTube, I also have access to different images, as well as other short movies that you might not see on my YouTube page, and also upcoming events such as the ZBrush Art Summit coming up this October. So if you want to learn more about that, be sure to check that out. Thanks.